Isn't it fun when someone comes up with a new way to use a craft room staple? Hi, I'm Ardeth, and today I'm going to introduce you to a brand new tool that puts a whole new spin on using stencils. This is Stencils 360 from Penguin Palace Stamps. This tool is simple and it starts with this plastic base with a circle cut from the center. Around the outside are concentric circles with symbols that take all the guesswork out of determining angles between your images. Next comes a whole lot of clear circles with cutouts. At first I was overwhelmed by all the pieces that come with this tool, but these are paper placement guides and they give you lots of flexibility for different paper sizes and truly make the process very, very simple. Here's the four and a quarter by five and a half inch template. Each template has an arrow at the top. When it's lined up at the top mark on the circle guide, your paper is straight and centered. Next are the stencil guides. Again, there's a number of them and each one is designed for a different size of stencil, eight inches, seven inches, and this one, which is four inches. I'm going to show you something really cool with this one later, so be sure to stick around to the end. Okay, so let's make something. To start, I'm going to tape the base to my work surface using purple tape. You really don't want this shifting when you're spinning. And when I store this, I just keep the purple tape on top of the base for next time, so I'm not using up all my tape. Next, I grab the paper placing guides. There's quite a variety, which gives you a lot of flexibility, but I'm going to use this one, which is the A2 sized one. I use the arrow printed on the clear template and I line it up with the top of the base. Then I put some temporary adhesive on the back of my cardstock and I press it down into the hole. There's a tiny bit of wiggle room due to manufacturing allowances, so I just do my best to center it. Next, I grab the 4 inch stencil guide and I place it in the base. Now I'm ready for my stencil. I'm using this little one from the Sacred Lotus set, which has three stencils included. The stencils also have markings on them so you can see where to position them in relation to the guidelines on the stencil guide in the base. Next, you tape the stencil to the stencil guide. These marks show you where to put the tape. And now let's take this baby for a spin. The different lines on the outsides have different symbols, and you simply choose the angle you want, and that translates to a symbol. Then as you spin the stencil in the guide, you move the arrow to the next symbol to get perfect angles every time, whether you want 6, 8, or 12 images. And remember, because this stencil has two holes, for 12 images, you only need to do 6 turns. Okay, here we go. I'm starting with limoncello ink and I'm blending it into the holes with a sponge dauber. And am I the only one who thinks this stencil looks like an alien looking back at me? I turn the stencil to the next triangle and I get my next color ready. Remember, you can choose a different angle than I did if you want, but I want to make a nice full rainbow daisy. Before I move to the pink, I wanted to wipe some of the ink off the stencil, and I tried to do that without wiping over the holes to minimize any contamination of my colors. Then I move to purple. Each time I'm coming in heavy on each end of the petal and I'm letting the pressure lighten in the center. This will give a really neat look of dimension to the flower. Next I moved on to my blue and then my green and then I'm done. Check it out. The ability to overlap the petals within one stencil with no masking and this is so easy. Next, I used the scallop circle die from the Heartfelt Wishes coordinating die set, and I cut out the center of my daisy so I can have a little more fun with my colors. To assemble the card, I put down a black circle on my card base, and I glued down the outside ring of my rainbow daisy. For the center, I put foam tape on the back to pop it up, but before I put it in place, I turned it so that the colors in the center don't line up with the ones out at the edges. Finally, I stamped a sentiment from the Heartfelt Wishes set using my Misty. Really, I should have done that before I put the center on the card, but I was so excited about that turning idea, I couldn't wait. Fortunately, even with all that foam tape, I managed to get a good impression. This is my favorite kind of card, bold and vibrant with a rainbow of color, and I love the detail I created by turning that center. It took me just a minute to get them lined up so that each petal has complementary colors on it. It's such an easy way to add more interest and get people wondering how you did it. Okay, that was fun, but let's try something else. This time I'm using the 6-inch paper guide. I know I won't make a 6-inch card, but having a larger panel will give me options of how to cut it down. Again, I lined up the arrow with the top center guideline, and I taped down the panel. Now I'm using the 8-inch stencil guide and the larger stencil from the Sacred Lotus set. 
I taped the stencil to the guide so that it can all turn as one piece, and this time I decided since the arrow was slightly off center and I wanted my petal right in the center at the top, I'm going to use the tip of the petal as my guide for placing the stencil. This time I want to show you that you don't have to stamp the whole thing all around the circle. I just want to make half a daisy for this card, and I decided to start with the horizontal petals, so I lined them up with the lines on the base, and I started with my pink ink, again giving each petal that dimension by going heavier on the outside and lighter in the centers. Now because this is the base of my half daisy, rather than turning the stencil, I'm going to just use the other hole for my pink petal. I'm not going to fill in any of the petals below this line. So as I move on to the next color, which is orange, I only do one petal since if I did the other one, I'd be filling in the half of the daisy that I don't want for this design. I move on to the yellow, and I keep wiping the stencil as I go so that my colors will be true. Then I moved on to the green, and then I added in some aqua since I want half the daisy to be symmetrical on both sides, so I need seven colors for this one. Next is blue, and finally purple. And then I work my way back through the rainbow in opposite order, right back to the pink. You could use brushes or blending tools for this, but I found that the sponge daubers really gave me a lot of control over my pressure over these fairly small holes. So if you wanted a full daisy, having both holes in these stencils makes it faster and easier, but you don't have to use them. By just using the one hole, I created this offset design that I can now trim down to make a card. I played with a square die for a bit before deciding to go right from the center and get the look of a peacock tail. I used the same thank you sentiment, and I trimmed it with a circle die from the set, and I popped it up with a black frame. So those are the basics of using this fun new tool, but I thought of a different way to use it. You can create your own stencils. Just take a 4-inch circle of cardstock and cut a shape from it, any shape you want, and then you've got your own stencil to create your own new patterns. And then I thought about my Penguin Palace stamp set Penguin Agenda. If I can use any die shape to create a stencil, why not a coordinating die? And then why not stamp in the hole instead of blending ink through? I started with a 4 inch circle cut from white cardstock, and I cut the penguin die from it. Then I taped it in place on my stencil guide. I used the 4 inch paper placement guide and I put my white square of cardstock in, and then I put the stencil over top. Then when I went to stamp the penguin inside, I realized it would be much easier to see where to stamp the penguin if my stencil was black. So now I'm ready to go. I used an acrylic block and I stamped it right into the hole. I didn't really know how many penguins would fit into my little circle, so I just turned the stencil until I couldn't see the stamped penguin anymore. Then I looked to see what angle I was at. I was kind of close to 45 degrees, so I put it right at 45 degrees and I stamped it again. Then I moved to the next triangle, which is another 45 degrees, and I stamped it again, and so on until I had eight penguins stamped, all just slightly overlapping, as if they're holding hands. To add some color to this, I masked four of the penguins, and I swinked the same rainbow of inks over them. If you don't know what swinking is, I'll put a link to my video up in the corner so you can check it out next. When I had the first four penguins swinked, I moved the masks and I did the rest. I colored the penguins with Copic markers, including some adorable rosy cheeks, and I stamped the sentiment in the center. I trimmed the swing panel with a circle die, and I gave it a black frame again. And then I made the penguins dance. Want to see? First, let's have a quick review. I used a 4-inch stencil to create a full rainbow daisy. Then I used an 8-inch stencil to create a big half daisy for a peacock tail look. And finally, I stamped instead of ink blending to create these dancing penguins. Why dancing? I added a wobbler to the back of the panel before I attached it to the card base, and this makes a perfect thank you card either for a child or from a child. I hope you enjoyed seeing this new tool in action. This video is part of a blog hop, so be sure to use the link in the description below to get all the details on my blog. Here's a link to my swinking video in case you haven't seen it. It's seriously the easiest background technique ever. All you need is an ink pad and some cardstock, and I've shown 16 ways that you can use it. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.